Be a voice. 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 Visit wisconsinvoices.org. Visit wisconsinvoices.org. Visit wisconsinvoices.org. And learn more on how to be a voice with Wisconsin Voices. Hello, Jessica. How are you? This is my first time meeting you. I want to say hello. Nice to meet you. Um, a little bit. They don't need to be nervous. Um, just be nervous at Keon because he like to look at people crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so just tell us a little bit about you before we get into all the automatic stuff. Um, just tell us a little bit about you, you know, um, just speak. Okay. So I am Jessica Curry, founder and executive director of Missionary Curry for Women and Children, which is a local nonprofit organization here in Southeast Wisconsin. I'm also a licensed realtor here in Wisconsin. And yeah, that's pretty much who I am overall. Okay, okay. Uh, well, uh, she said nonprofit. Brian, get on that after yeah, the election. Um, <laughs> so we just for our community baby showers. Oh, yeah. We go hard with the baby showers. Okay. So that's a, but that that is something that is so needed. I remember back in the day when I had my daughter Jada, I was actually unemployed. Mm -hmm. I didn't have anything. I got a, a small baby shower actually from my rugby team. Mm -hmm. But there was a lot that as a somebody who wasn't planning on having any kids at 31 was just lost. It was like, uh-oh, what am I going to do? I don't know what I need. Yeah. All my friends had had their kids. They were like, we don't remember that back in the day. Yeah. So I, you know, it was a, a struggle. So I'm glad there's an organization like yours. So the reason um, I started it was actually I was on the radio and um, I was a homeless teen mom. Okay. And my grandmother, she was fleeing domestic violence when she came here. So she only got two kids that's here. So we don't have a big family. So, no, I'm not related to nobody oh. <laughs> that y'all thought I was related to because I'd hear on the radio that I was related to um, some guy with, a, with the last name Curry. But, no, my grandmother was seeing the best part when she came here. But me being a home team mom, I wanted to have a baby shower. I was, I was saying, like, maybe we could have a community get together and give moms a baby shower. And that's how I birthed it. Well, I am glad. So, um, I ask every candidate mm -hmm. um, this same question over and over. Mm -hmm. um, what does an alderman do? The in your words. Well, I feel like the older person is someone who represents the community, someone who can advocate, um, and then also someone who's engaged. So knowing what the community needs is and being active in approaching those needs. Okay. Because I, I, we ask everybody that question just to see, and people gauge if they think that, you know, yeah, she knows what she's talking about, or that's what I want, or or not. I mean, but I ask the same question to everybody. Yeah. Um, I was looking at your district focus, and you have uh, speed, crime, domestic violence, uh, policing, schools, senior support, safety. Mm -hmm. How do you feel, what can you do as an older person to to help these things? As an older person, I feel um, we need to also, we need to focus on addressing it. Addressing the issues that's in hand. So homelessness, nobody ever addressed that. Um, sex trafficking, nobody ever addressed that. There's so many kids that's missing, nobody ever addressed that. It's like we sweep everything under the rug. So me as an older person, I would address it and work with the community to fix the problem. So that's what I um, plan on doing. We have, um, yeah, like, so you're saying work with some of the organizations that are already out there doing that and then um making sure they they have some i guess you could say uh support guidance and things of that nature so yeah so when it come down to um helping with the youth i started that maybe 2017 mm -hmm. and my first food pantry was actually in the seventh district i was on the back of a u-haul truck <laughs> okay okay that <laughs> yes, sounds sir. familiar Keon right. jackson both of them. So, right so, I started on the back of a U-Haul truck. My organization, um, when I got started, I, I did it out in Racine because I didn't have a lot of support here in the city of Milwaukee. When you knew, it's like people kind of like, oh, no, we don't know where she come from and this and that. So I was like, all right. So I got a lot of guidance and a lot of support out in Racine. So 
Um, I got a great connection with Roundies. They donated a lot of food to us, and they like, hey, if you can pick it up. Um, they didn't give us any bags though, so it was bring your own bag food pantry on the back of the U-Haul. Okay, that's our way of saying it. That's our way of saying it. Bring your own bag. <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh, we have a lot of comments in y'all. Listen, that's, that's Tian's uh, organization. Really, he's doing, and okay. that's exactly how it is. So I see we have a caller. Caller, let's see. Uh, caller, go ahead. Hey, good afternoon to you guys. I have a question for the uh, the, uh, the 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 young lady that's running for that seven district seat. She said, uh, as an all, you asked her a great question. You asked her what is an alderman and uh, what to her, and she said one that represents the community. And she says one that uh, advocates for the community. I want to ask her, who are you going to advocate to? And who are you going to represent the community to? Uh, because, well, first, I just want to ask that question. Who, who are you going to advocate to? That's an amazing question. So who are I advocate to? Oh, oh hold, on, hold on. You said that's a what kind of question? No, I said that's an amazing question. That's what I said. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Good morning. Um, so basically, um, when you on the common council, I know oftentimes they have to vote on different things. If it's for the community, then I'm for it. But if it's, if it's not for the community, I'm against it. So on that level, when decisions need to be made, I want to be able to advocate for things that's actually suitable for our community. So that's what I mean by representation, making sure my voice is heard as well as the community voice is heard. Okay. Oh, he's gone. Oh, he's gone. Well, that answered your question. Um, we have, um, uh, we have so many, uh, you have a, a primary, yeah. which is tomorrow, tomorrow, Joan Marie, tomorrow. tomorrow. So I know you're going to be, uh, getting out of here and hitting them doors, right? Yeah, absolutely. Get out yeah. of here. But that's, thank you for, um, taking your time to, to be part of this. So, um, in your, in your strategy to, to, um, speak for the people, mm -hmm. um, do you have, like, what is your, what is your, I, I see you have some of these things, but what is your, like, number one focus that you just mm -hmm. see that needs to be done that is not being done by, you know, now or that you want to implement, you know, in a later? My number one strategy, I'm really big on resources. Mm -hmm. I consider myself as a resource navigator, and I believe we need a resource hub in the center of the community, like for sure. So my um, campaign office is already in District 7 mm -hmm. and whatnot. So just me advocating for us to have it inside of our schools. So a resource navigator would be inside the schools. So say, for instance, a kid is dealing with trauma. Um, they witnessed something or they've been through something. We can have people there to give them resources. So say, for instance, it's food. We can give them resources in regards to where the local food pantries are and all that. So the kid is helping the parent out because a lot of people just don't know the information, even though the um, the resources is available. Catch Wisconsin Voices, Pia Voice Radio, every Monday, Tuesday, and Friday at 11 a.m. as we focus on community partnerships, voter education, and long-term collective impact for all Wisconsinites. You're listening to Wisconsin Voices, BA Voice Radio. Follow us at BAWI Voice and learn more at wisconsinvoices.org. In studio right now, we have one of the mayoral candidates. Um, let's uh, welcome Aisha Griffins. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, you got to get up onto that mic. You got to get up in there because Keon going to give you side eye. Keon going to give us side Oh, what'd you say? No, no, no. Oh, he ain't messing with you? Oh, no. Oh, wait. There was a bow. I appreciate it. I don't know. I don't want no smoke. I think this is my first time meeting her. Um, uh, this is it. So, tell... We're going to go the same routine. Tell us a little bit about yourself and um, why you decided to run. For, well, we're going to start, start with why you decided to run for mayor. Okay. Well, I believe I'm the best candidate on the ballot for mayor because um, I'm not um, affiliated with any corporations or any private interests. 
Um, I'm definitely from the people. I'm a public servant. I've been a public servant since I was about 17. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a bona fide human rights consultant. I'm a human um, rights attorney, something that, you know, is controversial because how I became one. Um, I didn't go the traditional route. Um, I'm also a paralegal. You know, I've been doing um, volunteer work in the, in the city for so long that a lot of the um, known players in the city, they know me for my work as a teenager in, in the streets and different things of their nature. Um, I'm running because of the effects. Like I said, a lot of different things um, that I've um, put out there in social media, the effects of poverty, racism, sexism, um, systematic oppressions. These are things that I can identify with. Um, and when you run for office, you should be able to identify with the things most affecting the community, you know? And so I'm, I believe I'm the only candidate, um, the strongest candidate on the ballot. I'm running against one candidate that I call a counterfeit because of the controversial um, about the race the first time. And the second one, um, David, I call him David D. Lion King because everything that comes out of his mouth, he's a pathological liar. From his background to uh, his businesses, a number of different things of that nature, you know, he's a strong, he's a strong man. Um, right Hold now, on one second. Mm -hmm. This show, the views, <laughs> wait, wait, the views and opinions of our guests do not reflect the views of what's of the Scots and Boys. Right, right, right. The queen of lighters. Well, yeah. I know one thing that she has probably that no other um, mayoral candidate has is that she know shorthand. I'm looking at her. No, she got some shorthand here. Right, and, like, and, and that's why I bought these because I definitely wanted to point out some things that I want to do that's completely different, that's never ever been done as a mayor. You know, we've had a mayor... Yeah, every every mayor in the city of Milwaukee has been a male, and it's been either Republican or Democrat. But at no point in time have we have we have a female mayor, you know, and not just a female mayor, but a strong mayor, you know. And that's one thing about me. Um, of course, I'm running for different um, races, but even with this race, if you compare the nomination signatures from they had help. Every signature I got on my nomination paper, I personally talked to the people. I personally looked at them in the eyes. I personally discussed the issues. You know, at some point in time, I had to go off the trail and help people as far as homeless people, um, ab abuse, domestic violence, a number of different things that's going on now. And going to um, things of that nature, we have a candidate on the ballot, da David uh, King, who, who has a history of violence that we're no one is speaking about. You know, and again... Yes. The views and opinions mm -hmm. of our guests. <laughs> yes, please. Yeah. Okay. That's what's constantly yeah. yeah. And, and, and no, I'm going to know that they can, they can check this out. You know, you can, cause, cause I'm, I'm just shocked how, you know, um, I spoke with a couple, a couple of his victims, you know, and these women are terrified. How can you have a person? And I, I was listening to your show earlier, you know, trying to get an understanding. And I think I heard maybe that was you saying something about a man who's on a ballot with another race who, sexually assaulted women oh i didn't say that or, or, some, or somebody was saying something about sexual assault you know i think it was trump they were talking about trump you know in history uh, or somebody here was saying yeah. that today you know yeah sex okay we said trafficking what what well you know any abuse against a person's body is a, a is a violation so you know you have a woman that um and i'm not the first person to know this has been written from the from all over the country how a woman said he drugged her and then um, raped her and then she got pregnant by him and then he told her to have an abortion. Then he told her, well, my wife want to see the baby first, you know, and this lady um, was tricked into coming to a job for him, which he didn't even work at. He volunteered by seasons. He was sued, you know, and then you have public service with public service is power and responsibility, you know, and so if you have a person that has a, a powerful position and you have women because the number one crime in the city of Milwaukee in the state of Wisconsin is abuse against women. It's not homicides. It's not robbery. It's not burglary. It's assaults on women. Uh, you, you know, and we've had a, a mayor who, who, was, who was accused of sexual assault before Norquist, you know, who had to take a lot of the funds and, and, and resign because of that, you know. And so this man, like I stated, I have an appeal going on where, where he got paper, he, paper that was supposed to be turned in. He never turned in. So some of the things that I want to do that's different from, from any other candidate never say anything about rights for women. You know, I want to have safe space, safe spaces. Not only can women use them, but anybody who's having an issue in the city. You know, um, if a woman or anyone who's been assaulted prefers a certain sex gender to report that, she should be able to have that gender. You know, that's something that I looked at. A number of people who uh, report crime, police uh, 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 just brush it off, you know. Um, also... 
Mm-hmm. Oh, but but I got to get one question in there because you what you 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 just explained so much. But I want to be fair and balanced. Mm-hmm. And the, every question that I always ask is, what does an older person do? Alder, so uh, I mean, wait wait, I'm okay. I, I'll get to it. Okay. What I'm saying is, I've asked, what does an older person do? What does a supervisor do? What does a mayor do? Okay, a mayor is supposed to be all of them are public servants. You know, so your 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 loyalty is to the public and to bring services to the public, you know. And the mayor is the top person in that in that position to do that. It's like the mini president of the United States, the mini governor of the state is is your mayor, you know. And so I'm the only candidate on the ballot that has the Aisha for the people plan, a plan for the community, you know, a platform for the community, a vision for the community. Um, if you go on my Twitter and my Facebook, I'm constantly talking about the Aisha for the people plan. You know, um, me and us, massive economic neighborhood development under supervision, bringing people to the Can table. you slow that down and say it? That oh, means. massive economic development under supervision, uh, where we're bringing people to the table to talk about um, being in positions to have long-term employment, not just like short-term goals. And and another thing was, you know, um, I noticed that Cavalier, he had got, gave himself a um, raise, you know, um, <laughs> And one of the things that, because he's a liar, you know, and, you know, uh, I would like if I'm elected and, and, and I want to point out there's more women in the city than men. So the women alone can bring, can bring this election to something that's never, ever been, but I would like everyone to vote for me. But even when he gave himself a raise, I would take that money and donate it, you know, to, to the unemployed people in Milwaukee, you take a certain percentage, you can have odd jobs for them until you have the training and different things of that nature. I've always talked about donating money, you know, not, so we have two people in this race who are in it for the income and I'm in it for the outcome, you know, and that's a, that's a big difference. You know, um, I definitely want to give and give and give. That's all I've done as a um, human rights attorney. And as a, as a uh, paralegal, I'm the only person in this city who's ever help people pro se litigants represent themselves in criminal cases which they which they were found not guilty, you know, without lawyers. I'm the only one done that. In in history, Tupac's mother did it for herself, you know. Um I've also helped women get their children back, you know, um, a number of different things that sets me apart from the um opponents. But I want people to know this is a very, very, very important race because it could change the dynamic of so much, you know, with who you put in office. So we got a couple of callers. Um Keon, who we got? Oh no, check it out. Hello, 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 Paul. Hi. How how are you? Well, I'm to all the cool. voice. Yes, but uh, I eat the group. <laughs> uh, this young lady here, I met her out here uh, doing the uh, petition, and she did it by herself. She talked to the people that sucked it down like. They get out there doing it on their own and have other people do the work for them. It's okay to have other people do it, but she did this by herself, getting her signature. And that, that's something beautiful to look at. And I will be voting for Aisha Griffin tomorrow. And I hope that all these other women get out here and vote, including the men. This young lady here. She got a good head on her shoulders. This woman going out here helping the community. And she's doing it because this is something that she wants to do. She wants to make a better community for the people. She's for the people. So all I can say, get out there to vote, everybody, tomorrow. No, on the 20th, right? Well, that's went tomorrow. You were right. Yeah, tomorrow. Get out there and vote and make your word, make your vote count so that we could have somebody that's for the people be here for the people, not just looking at the income, but be here for the people and make Milwaukee a better place. Come on. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you so much. We um, Voting does start at 7 o'clock tomorrow. Um, it goes until 8 p.m. for 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, well, she, she appreciated the fact that you collected your signatures yourself. So um, we're going to take another call and then I'm going to ask you about other races. Okay. Um, caller got another yeah, caller. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. Miss Vukovic. Uh, 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 oh yeah. Watch me. How you doing? Miss Griffin. I'm good. Thank you. 
Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Toy, you already know it, Keon, too. What up? <laughs> He may oh, not yeah, want his government no. name out there. Uh, 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 hey. <laughs> what is your question, comment, concern for Ms. Clinton? Question, comment, comment. Uh, uh, I'm doing a GOTV track. But uh, this election, it's not finished. But I will drop some today. But I want to encourage all the candidates. Uh. We appreciate it. And Ms. Griffin, you are a true soldier. And it's good to see you back in the game. You know, ain't no haters around here, you know. Uh, 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 keep doing what you do. And that's all. I just had a comment. That's all. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Anonymous Todd. Um, uh, <laughs> um, we got to we gotta talk about the elephant in the room because if you've looked at the ballot or you, you, you which everybody should know, you are on the ballot multiple times. Let's talk about the primaries. So you are just on one primary for a primary, and that is mayor. Right. But then you also are on um, the ballot um, because you turned in signatures for a, a few other. So you turned in signature for a county exec. Mm -hmm. So you are running against David Crowley. Yeah. Um, you are running against Jonathan Brostoff in District 3, three and you are running for County Supervisor, I believe. Are you running? Oh, no. Um, District 15 is on appeal right now. Okay. Know, they did some real scandalous things with my um, nomination paper, Russell Stamper and a private uh, investigator. Um, so I'm on appeal with that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just a, a comment. So everything I say, you know, I don't just put it out there. You can you can fact check everything I'm saying, you know. And um, sometimes people think that women are angry about something or what mm -hmm. have you, or that angry black woman stereo. But you know, anger is a natural response to pain. So you should be angry when you are uh, subjected to a number of different things that other people aren't subjected to, you know. And we can we need to stop uh, saying, "Well, I'm not a victim. I'm a victim." I tell people all the time, "I am a victim. I've been victimized on so many levels." Um, one of the reasons why I'm running for a number of different races because of Claire, I call her Cl Crooked Claire. You know, um, she has falsified things. I've I've been suing people all over left and right. You know, um, I'm still, I haven't had my day in court. But one thing she used to do was I would turn in nomination signatures. She would email me, Miss Griffin, you met this, this, and that. They would wait right before deadline to tell me, oh, something's different. So you can't be on there. I would challenge it. You would never, ever hear my challenge in public. She would take it off. You know, um, one of the things she did with District 15, we're not going to go all the way into, but up until the morning we had a, 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 a hearing, she told me I was on the ballot. And I find out a few hours before uh, it was it was a, a meeting that she says that uh, Russell Stepper took a private investigator and went somewhere with some papers. I went back and talked to everybody, recorded them a number of different things and found out some scandalous federal criminal things that they did, including with um, Claire. And so every time I read, I was subjected to something that this woman put no one else through. She only did it to me. So then you can look at it as racism, sexism, or status, or what have you, because it hasn't happened to anyone else. And, and the degree that it, it goes to, it makes you think about right now, like this is Black History Month. You've had women like Soldier and the Truth who they put a, a rope around her neck and made her uh, pull a horse. You know, um, Harriet Tubman was hit with bricks in her head and she finally got, got tired and, and did this um, underground railroad. So I identify with that. I'm like, this woman continues to do things, continues to do things, you know, and I would tell the public, I would tell the people, here's the proof, here's the proof. And so what I said was, every time I go uh, get nomination signatures, there's our people. These are people who take the time out to put their name on there, who cry out to me. You got third district people um, on, on locusts who are living in a building with bed bugs the size of cockroaches who are who have people in the hallways who are prostitutes and pimps people who got killed in the building they said jonathan never came near it there there are people crying out left and right and it hurts my heart to know that she will play with their nomination and you know people will tell me um i want you to be this or i want i talk to elders or veterans who are going through so much you know or or people been assaulted and she would take their nomination as if it was nothing and you won't see me on the ballot so I said, okay, 
um, when the opportunity presents itself, I'm coming back for them, you know, and that's what I did. So I, I saw the opportunity, it presented itself. It, it was hard work, but it was worth it because I identified with them. I talked with them. I, I can be out there getting 10,000 signals. So you, you actually, um, wait, uh, yeah, we, um, what is, uh, some of the things that, so when you started this, this race in, in December, when collections started, mm -hmm. you collected for May, which ones did you collect for? And then like all together. So you collected for mayor, you mayor, for county, 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 exactly. and mayor is 2000 signatures, correct? 1500 or 15, but I got about 2700. I okay. believe about 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 seventeen, close to two thousand. Yeah. Um, county exact two thousand. Um, what else did you fifteen? You you turned in over. I, I turned in the the minimum, but more than the minimum because you know she had played with numbers. So I was out there in the cold. I was out there seven in the morning until midnight. I was in buildings that they won't even step in. You know, um, eleven, twelve at night, talking to people left and right, grinding, grinding, grinding. I was out there grinding that. Biden rolled past me. The, the the president was here. It, it was so, I'm not going to lie, it was ghetto and pathetic the way they did not cover this man up. He was in the hood where I'm in the hood getting signatures. His, and I got a video of him, I'm sure at some point in time, his limo is by itself. And you got people in the street um, who, you know, about that life, you know, came up, was about to come up to his, his limo. And I was like, wow, as a mayor, you shouldn't even let him be open like that, you know, but it was tacky. You know, it was very tacky. What else but, did you run? So then did you run for any county supervisor seat? County executive. Just county executive. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then um, the 15 and the rest of stamp. Mm -hmm. Well, um, yeah, you have a, 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 hey, that's a lot of ambition. Mm -hmm. I have to get, I have to, on my ballot, I have to get um, 20 signatures. And I'd be like, oh, he's 20. 20. <laughs> All right. Well, I also have a smaller yeah, demographics yeah. or the geography to work with. Mm -hmm. Um, this is not your first rodeo. No, no, no. Um, you know, and a lot of people confuse me and Lena Taylor, which I love. I'm glad she's on that. I'm, I'm almost emotional, you know, to see a black woman as a judge because these are strides, these are chains being broken, you know, and my hat goes off to her. And I've never ever campaigned for another candidate, but I will campaign for her to <laughs> make sure she stay on that bout on that bench. But um one of the things I ran for was against Tom Barrett. A lot of people think Lena was before me, but I, I really was the first woman, black woman to run against him, but he wouldn't challenge me. You know, even even with this primary right now, I've, I've tried to challenge the two opponents that wouldn't challenge me. You know, um, they've kept this this race um, as quiet as possible. You know, so so when, when I first ran for office, it was um, for Holly Williams seat. And um, I sat with her. A lot of people don't know, um, I used to model I used to model for her son as well. And I used to go to school with her grandson. And um, at some point in time, I sat at a table with Polly Williams. And she was saying that she was retiring, you know, and different things in nature. And I, I admired her for so long. And um, I asked her, can I run for her seat? And she gave me her consent to do that. So that was the first seat I ran for, you know. And so um, I was kind of new and fresh. I didn't really know about a lot of underhanded things that was going on. But the fact that you can take an opportunity to probably make change meant so much to me and so like I tell people it's no different from when you see a lot of people in sports your team might lose but you still rally behind them they come back and they try again and try again but this is real life you know so no matter what the obstacles are as long as the people want me I'm going to be here you know and I had to give that a lot of thought because I thought about a lot of different things where you know I want to open up a business that's never ever been open globally you know I want to do something for pro state litigants you know I've been working on it and tweaking on it, you know, and, and talking with people on an international level about it. But then I've been pushing it aside because I help so many people. And I thought about, do I want to focus on that after all these elections or do I want to continue to try? You know, so I'm up in the air about that. But um, people want me, you know, um, like I've said, a lot of elders continue to ask me to run. You know, um, a lot of people who, who, who um, voted for me in the past, I can just say, how you doing? I'm like, you should rip it. And, oh, I know you. I'm going to, you know. And, 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 and I've never, ever from since the first time I ran for office gotten signatures so quick when they heard I was running against Capitol Liar, they were so disgusted with him, you know, women, men, and, and a lot of women were so happy that I was running. 
you know, um, and I, I, I got those signatures. Those were the fastest signatures I got out of, out of everything, you know, and I'm, I'm proud to say that. Please join Wisconsin Voices every Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. We will be focusing on community partnerships, voter education, and long-term collective impact for all Wisconsinites. You're listening to Wisconsin Voices Be A Voice Radio. Follow us at B A W I Voice and learn more at WisconsinVoices.org. Uh, good morning. Um, thank you for taking my call. Assalamu alaikum to you all. Happy Savior's Day, Detroit. Here we come. Um, listening to the uh, the sister who is the candidate for the mayor's mayor's position, Aisha right? Griffin. Yes, ma'am. Aisha Griffin. Greetings to you. Um, you are running for uh, may- the mayor's position and the executive, the county executive position, right? Yes. All right. Okay. Listening to um, your uh, dissertation, uh, your information, what I'm hearing, I'm hearing about or hearing from you uh, that you have been motivated. And I, I would like to say this before I say anything else. I um, applaud you on your tenacity, your fervor, your ambition, your uh, stick to itness um, to uh, move to ascend to some executive uh, position inside of the city or whatnot. But what I'm not hearing from you, dear sister, is an agenda concerning our people. Um, what do you have? Do you have like bullet points? What is your strategy that you uh, seek to implement that would aid and assist the downtrodden, um, a disenfranchised Black community and the others who are locked out? Do you have a plan? And if you do have a plan, can you be more uh, accurate and precise as to what it is and how you would seek to uh, manifest uh, your plan? Thank you, caller. Go ahead. We got about two minutes. You can, okay. Yeah. Well, I'll just paraphrase. I have the Aisha for the People plan. You can look at it on my Twitter and my Facebook. You can call me. Anybody can call me directly. You What's know, the my, number? My, uh, 414-239-2112. And my Aisha for the People plan is a plan for the people. It, call, it talks about housing, economic, even for, from for juveniles to um, one of the things I want to do is constitute calendar days where I always talk to the citizens. I have all your women Wednesdays talking about issues that affect women. Um, Mayor to men Mondays, issues that is, that's affecting men. I have juvenile justice jams to break that pipeline of prison for our, our youth so that crime can be prevented, you know, uh, run the causes of crime. I have senior, seniority citizen days where we, we do things for the seniors. I also have something that's completely different that's never ever been done where I want to hire the administration, hire the people as part of my administration. So like the first week, um, it will be like 18 to 25 year olds working for me. And you will get paid. The second week, it will be 26 to 46. The third week, uh, 47 and older. The fourth week, we integrate because I want the people to know this is their seat. You know, and then you have an interaction with everybody in different age groups, different um, spectrums. We'll learn to respect each other. You'll learn different things about different different people. You know, that's something that I um, said I wanted to do. And I'm, I'm going to stick to it, um, electing your mayor or any 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 um, position. And um, full disclosure, um, because this is a primary for the mayoral re- race, I um, asked Miss Aisha Griffin to just stick kind of to her mayoral um, platform. Um, she may have another platform for the other seats that she is running and will hopefully she'll come back again to talk about that. But that is why she is strictly on that.
voice. Be a 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 voice. Visit wisconsinvoices.org. Visit wisconsinvoices.org. Visit wisconsinvoices.org. And learn more on how to be a voice with Wisconsin Voices.